everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a really lovely display box to put the teacup and saucer in. So I made that uh, ooh, last week. I will share a little link up here for anybody that's new to the channel, hasn't seen it. It's a beautiful, really lovely little Mother's Day um, project that I made and I have loved seeing what you've been making. You've been sharing so many over on the Facebook group. They're amazing. They're so nice. And um, yeah, I love little twists and stuff that you've added to them. I asked the question in that tutorial if you wanted a gift box. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked the question, I should have just done it because pretty much everybody commented or sent me a message saying, yes please, we'd like a box. When are you doing the box? Um, so <laughs> I've done it, fingers crossed you like it. So I'm gonna bring it to the side. I can't bring it right over because the chocolates fall out. Probably should have taken them out, but basically I have decided now that I'm gonna leave my teacup in here. So I've attached it with glue dots. And the idea is, you can just see there, this is how lovely it will look in this display box on someone's shelf, in their craft room, you know, even if you're making it for yourself. I said before, you know, you don't have to give this to someone, just make it and appreciate it yourself. So I'll go all the way around there. So it's got a raised base, so it's that's why I've called it a display box. Take off the ribbon here. Now you can decorate this. I'm gonna also link up here my big bow birthday box. Now that is five and a half, no that's five by five and I think six inches tall or five and a half tall. Now that one may also work, I'll get to that in a second, but if I was to take out the chocolates and kind of all the, the Mother's Day stuff, this is what you're left with. So if I bring it up now, you see how lovely is that? Really, really pretty and there's the flower in the bottom. Um, so you can see here this is this kind of raised base. Now the this isn't hard to do, this is pretty straightforward, but you're working with acetate and acetate has a mind of its own. Now if you watch me do the tutorial and you think, oh gosh, I just don't know if I can do that one, look at that big bow birthday one because I do think the teacup, if you followed the exact dimensions that I've done here, that teacup will also fit in that box and it's, it's a more easier version I would say and it's all using cardstock. Now also you can use this and use cardstock, make this one and use cardstock. So if you imagine all the acetate is cardstock, but you could cut a window. So you could cut a circle die, you could have a square die, and just put a small piece of acetate behind it. So yeah, if you don't have the acetate, don't worry, because this is using 12 by six acetate, which I'll share as well. But I just wanted to talk you through a few alternatives at the beginning here. So watch this one, see what you think, but then do revert to that big birthday box and look at the bow that I make on top. So the bow's brilliant and that would look fantastic on the top of this. But I'm just going to use nice old ribbon for this one. I think that looks really nice as well. So hopefully I've given you lots of um, options. I always like to kind of, you know, share more than one way of doing something because not everybody has these things. So there's is always ways to adapt. So I'm going to just feed in all these lovely little bits here. So if you again, if you hadn't seen this, this is just a little Mother's Day. This has got a tea bag in it and then there's chocolates. So the idea is, is mum on Mother's Day takes some time out and sits down, appreciates her nice little gift, enjoys the lovely strawberry Lindor <laughs> chocolates and um, enjoys her cup of tea. So pop them all in there or like I said, keep it as a nice little display piece for yourself. All right, I'm not gonna faff about with the ribbon now. I will do all that later. Okay, so sorry about all the glares because obviously I'm working with plastic today. So you've got four corners here, um, those pieces here. This is the acetate, which I've shared before. I've got the link to this, I think, on my Amazon storefront, which I will link in my blog post. But this is the Do Crafts 10 sheets of clear acetate 12 by 12 and it is very strong, it's really strong stuff. And again, it doesn't tell you the microns, which is really annoying, but it's just strong, it's heavy stuff. So I paid £4.9 for this from Trago Mills. I don't know if you can get it that cheap. I can't remember how much it is on my link that I've shared, but it's really, really good and it's 12 by 12. So again, apologies for the glare there. So I've got two pieces here. So these are six by 12. So it's just one piece of the 12 by 12 acetate just cut in half. Okay, so you can see there. So that's those. Then you'll need four pieces of one by six and these are for your corners. Now you might want to do something really decorative. You might have some dies or something that you can use on the corners there. It's entirely up to you. And also, depending on what tape you're using, I'm using red tape, which is pretty much invisible. You can hardly see it here. If you can see your tape, you may want to add a pretty kind of border die 
along here. So if you imagine that's the flat end of the border die and all the detail comes up over the acetate, that would look really pretty as well. So like I said, there are you know quite a few ways to decorate this very differently. Then for your base, you want a piece of seven and a half by seven and a half. And whatever your print is, that will be facing obviously up. So it's what you're going to see. So just play around, see what you've got. You, you want something that's not directional really. So you can see with this, it's just the rose print. It's in all directions. That's what you want. And then for the lid, it's a reinforced lid, which I like. And this is nine and five eighths of an inch squared. Okay, so first of all, we're going to score the base. So this is your seven and a half by seven and a half piece. All you want to do is score at one inch on all four sides. So one inch, one inch, one inch, and one inch. Okay, then you want to grab your lid, okay, while we've got our scoreboard out, and you want to score at one and two. Okay, then you want to pull out slightly, just like I did for the lid that I had to redo for the daffodil stepper card. So you're going to pull the card out slightly just so it's revealing a little bit of your scoreboard there. And then you want to score at seven and three quarters and eight and three quarters. Then rotate, pop it right into the corner again, and you're going to score at one and two. And then pull it out slightly again and score at seven and three quarters and eight and three quarters. Okay, so that's your reinforced lid and that is your base. You've got your four corners and then we've just got our acetate. Now we'll get all this prepared first and then we'll go back to the acetate. So you'll need your scoreboard again in a moment. So for these pieces here, along the one inch side, sorry, you want to score at half an inch, okay? And then just fold and burnish. And what I've done is I've put some red tape on the two sides there closest to the outer edge not so much in the, the corner it doesn't matter I mean if you've got half an inch tape and it fills all of that that's fine but I just used quarter of an inch here and just made sure I hugged the outer sides so four of those fold and burnish and then we'll start with the base here which will just have those four score lines so again just fold and burnish and then pick a side, any side, and you want to very neatly cut down the score line to the first score line. So you're just creating a little tab. And again on this side, like so. And then rotate the whole thing around so those bits are facing away. And again, cut down and cut down. And then like I always do, you just want to cut little wedges there. So just cut in just so you're creating little tabs. Flip it right the way around. And again, like so, and like so. Okay, so that's what you should have there for the base. And then I'm just gonna grab some of my wet glue and just put a very thin amount, cover that tab and bring this around. Now make sure you get a really nice corner to it. Try not to go in too much. You want to make sure that the edge of that meets right up with the fold. You want a perfect right angle. If these are slightly out, it's going to affect the acetate sticking to the outer side, which will then affect the top, which will affect the lid. And again, just bring that one round. And just carry on and do that on the other two. Okay, and then I'm just going to go in on all of those tabs and just make sure all my glue is spread out. And you should have this tray but we're going to be turning it upside down so we've actually got this raised little platform now i'm also going to use my red tape now this is this stuff is brilliant now i i've always used this one which is from every crafts a pound you get 23 rolls for 10 pound and you get all different sizes this is the thickest one this is i think five eighths of an inch oh no it is half we well, yeah, i thought it was bigger than that anyway I think they might be bigger than still, but it's really good value for money and it is as clear as you're going to get when you're using acetate. So again, I'll link that in on my blog where I get this. Um, I'm going to actually put in another order soon because I'm getting down to the last few rolls. Now it's up to you whether you want to hog the bottom, like the actual edge here or the, the folded part. So if you have got a tape that you're going to see, you might want to put it right through the middle and then have ribbon over the outside as a decorative piece. If you're going to be covering this again, like I said, with those dies or something, then it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to keep mine kind of towards the bottom, like so. And you just want to keep it nice and straight, 
make sure you've got no bits underneath it or any dust or hair or anything like that that sometimes kind of gets stuck and just very neatly work around and again whenever you're using tape as I always say burnish over it afterwards and make sure you remove all the air bubbles because they're the kind of thing that you will actually see they, they can be quite visible so you want to bring it right to the corner there and then just cut that away neatly and then I'm just going to flip it over and I'm just going to burnish it's a bit slidey and it slips everywhere but I just want to make sure that it's nice and stuck down and I've got all the air bubbles out and it should go really dark in colour so it's a little bit lighter on that side because there's obviously lots of air still where it's not actually stuck right down. So I'm just going to do that and just check make sure you'll know when it's all stuck down like I said you'll get rid of all those bubbles and that all helps with it becoming really clear and almost see-through okay so that is our kind of platform ready then we'll move over to our reinforced lid so again just go around and fold and burnish all of those score lines okay and then again you're going to cut up both of the score lines in the corners so again as always with a reinforced box you will have four squares in each corner one two three four one one two three and four you want to cut up the two of them to the second score line so here's the first score line you're cutting up to that second one so again here I'm cutting past that first one down to the second and like so okay then you want to remove the outer two completely like so and again this one and then remove the top single one like so she should be left with a little tab so it will look very similar to the base but this time you'll have two pieces of this rectangle side because that's what we're going to use to reinforce it so now again I'm just going to take little wedges off of them I'm going to take a little wedge off the side there one off the side there I must have something sticky on my scissors again off of that one that one that one and that one and then rotate the whole thing around now and you're going to work on this side and do exactly the same again okay so that is what you should have and then we're going to do again the same we're going to put glue on each of these smaller tabs like so bring that down and bring this side around and stick it and again make sure that that's a perfect right angle if you've gone in too much then it's going to obviously be too tight to fit on top so just make sure you spend a bit of time getting that all nice and lined up so again the next tab bring that down bring the next side up okay and repeat again the same on the other two okay so that's what you should have and then you'll have these four sides hanging like so and you just want to add glue and just fold them in so you don't have to be too exact with it just enough to tack it into the inside just fold it back in on itself pop it on its side and give it a good old rub with your bone folder so you get a nice side so just do that on all of the other sides and there is one reinforced lid again these papers are gorgeous they're the ones from the works the same ones that i used for the teacup and again i'll share all of that in I think it was an Eng english rose was it garden something like that I'm really bad like I said I lost the top to it so well my mum did right now on to our case okay so I've got my piece of 12 by 6 acetate along the 12 inch side you want to pull the card out ever so slightly okay from the side just the same as you've done with your lid and you want to score at five and five eighths of an inch okay really go over it a few times like so. so now if you burnish this we're going to do it bit by bit because it's easier because I'm aware you know not everybody will be working with acetate for this like I said you can do this bit with cardstock if you really burnish that and then kind of bring it back again like I said acetate does have a mind of its own but it will go exactly where you want it to go so you can see there it's got a nice right angle so this now will sit in there lining up really nicely okay 
and then coming around to this side here. Okay, so now what you want to do is take that away where we've just scored, okay, so that's five and five eighths, then put that folded piece into the corner here, okay, and score it at five and five eighths. Now because we've added that piece in there, that fold is already kind of bringing it out from the very edge here, so we don't have to pull it out because that fold has already kind of given us the room that we need. So that's five and five eighths, okay? And then you will have this tab. So again, you can fold that. Now I actually think that tab is too big. So let me just cut this down because I think you might be able to get away with normal size acetate if I remember rightly because that is, yeah that's way too big. Let me just trim that because it only needs to be half an inch. Yeah so it now means that you can use 11 and a half inch, so normal size acetate, normal A4 acetate. Obviously if you don't have that where you're from and it's just 11 then you would have to get the 12. 12 inch stuff but now you will have this so when it sits inside here it will perfectly sit around there okay and you'll be able to stick that to it and if you've got any kind of you know bits that you don't like or maybe it's stuck a bit funny we're going to be covering all the corners and you can cover all the bottom as well the idea is is I wanted something really open which is why I've gone for all this acetate so you want to do that again on the other piece so again here I'm going to just trim off half an inch already. So, like I said, we now know that that's 11 and a half by 12. By, so we now know that's 11 and a half by 6. So again, I'll just put a little note in on the tutorial. So again, you're going to pull the cardstock out from the beginning and score at 5 and 5 eighths. Burnish. Pop it back in and score at five and five eighths. And now I've got a smaller tab, but that'll be fine anyway. <laughs> I don't know why that's happened. Either way, you've got enough tab, okay, to stick it all together. So, talking about tabs, let me get rid of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna join the whole thing together. So, I'm going to pop some red tape and again you want to make sure you get this perfect with no bits of hair, no bits of dust, <laughs> bits of paper, you know what it's like in the craft room, we have all kinds of little like die cuts that find their way in and then really go over that making sure that you've got all your air bubbles out and then we're going to attach that to the plain edge of the six inch side so there's the tab on this end I've got my middle fold and you've got the plain side there that's what you want to stick the good thing is with acetate is if you don't get it on first time just peel it off she says as she catches the end there and if the tape gets funny peel the tape off as well so it is forgiving in that sense it's not like paper once it's stuck we've got to rip it and start again so it's um but once it does kind of catch it's there so you want to just line them up perfectly like that and then just go over it again with your bone folder and get out as many air bubbles as possible. And all you really should see is the, just the overlay of the plastic as opposed to the tape. So if I bring that up there, you can, you can see obviously the line of the tape, but you can't actually, it just looks like it's where the plastic's, you know, just overlaid, if you know what I mean. So I think it's, it's great stuff, it's really, really good. Just kind of manipulate your acetate back into place again and open this up and then you want to add some tape on the other tab there at the other end and I'm using double sided paper because obviously it's really pretty but you see the other side so once I stick this on you're going to see all that lovely rose print as you look inside the like little display box so yeah it's Try and use red tape and try and use double-sided pattern paper where you can. Okay, so now that is ready. So you can do a little test run before you take any tapes off and actually sit it in there and it should wrap around perfectly. Okay, you see there and obviously all that's going to now get stuck down. We want to do this now in stages, bit by bit. Okay, so we're going to start off 
by removing one side of this, Ooh, like so. Okay, so just do one side at a time and just fold that kind of back on itself. We're then going to lift this kind of tab up a little bit. Like I said, you can bend the acetate. If you're using paper, this obviously will be a little bit different for you. But you basically want to stick... Oh gosh, make sure you get it the right way up. <laughs> so you want the open end at, you know, facing the bottom, because remember this is a raised platform. So it needs to be this way up, okay? So it's, you know, treat it like a lid. All right. So now you want to start from this piece here and you want to line up the bottom perfectly with the bottom here and just kind of let it kind of find its way, just kind of guiding it right down to that other corner and then make sure you get that really stuck down. So the key to this is doing it bit by bit. So now I can leave that if the phone goes, you know, someone's come to the door, <laughs> you are going to be able to come back to this and it's still okay. So that's that one. Then we want to come around here and actually, do I want to do that? No, we want to come around this side here. So I'm just going to grab my pokey tool and I'm just going to pick that red tape because that's the other join, that's the other end and we need that bit out. But that's fine. I'm just going to lift it up carefully there, like so. And again, kind of pull that away. Okay, and then again, focus on the edge here. You want to make sure you get your base all lined up perfectly. And it should bring you to your corner again. And then take off your backing here. And again, just carefully start bringing that around. So just bit by bit. And then the last one. Like so. Take that out. It will also stick that side down and then what you can do is take this one out here which is your side tab and stick that all down like so. Now what you want to do is turn it on its side and just go in with your bone folder and just make sure that that's all stuck down. your joins there as well and now you have your box okay really really nice next we need to just cover up all of our corners so again this is optional but um, I think it looks really nice and again if you've got any little bits that you don't like then this will cover it up so bring it up to the corner here start from the top or the bottom it's entirely up to you that it's exactly six inches so I'm going to start from the bottom and get the corner meeting up and then kind of wrap it and then just let it kind of follow all the way up like so and just do that on all of your corners Okay, so now you should have your little display case. Really nice. You can obviously use this for anything as well. It's a handy sized box. Now I've got my other teacup here and I'm just going to add a few glue dots on the base here. You could use wet glue if you want because it's just paper sticking to paper. Hot glue if you've got, you know, maybe yours is a little bit heavier and it's got other bits on it. You may not want to do this at all. This is because I'm thinking it's quite nice to just keep it in there. Um, but you might have other ideas and I know some of you have already put them in really nice cellophane bags so you know if you're doing any craft fairs or you're selling them then that's probably much quicker um, way to do it so you can obviously do that as well but for those of you that have asked like I said there's quite a few <laughs> then here it is and then you want to decide how you want it displayed. You might have a preference to the way your box looks. I'm going to do mine that way and have it 
like that. Yeah, about there. I'll just stick that down. Like so, and then grab your lid, and that should fit perfectly over the top. And just move it about like so. And there you have it. How cool is that? Really love this the thing, looks so nice. And then I've got, I think I'm gonna use this ribbon. So let's go like so, twist it around. Flip it back over, I think that's enough ribbon. Again, this was that ribbon that I got from the range. I've done that um, in my What Did I Get little video a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful. Give that a nice big bow. I think I need to fiddle with it a bit more, but how beautiful is that? I absolutely love this. I think it's just brilliant. So I will link in those other boxes as well, because I have got other sizes that I think this would work with well. Um, if you don't like acetate, change it up. And if you want to do more of a window look, then do have a look at that other box because I think you'll get a lot of inspiration. But how beautiful is that? What a lovely Mother's Day gift. Or for anybody. So there you have it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you like it. Hope it has inspired you. Hope you make it. <laughs> I'll be back again next week with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.